Hello, I'm Chris Hartwell, and welcome to The Heartbeat, the place where I talk about just a few of the things that make this little guy tick. Today, we're going to be talking about Joe Wright's pan. Join me, won't you? So, Pan is, or leastways is intended to be, the prequel to J.M. Barry's beloved Peter Pan story. And in it, we are introduced to a young Peter who's been left by his mother at an orphanage in London. And though the story takes place during World War II and the height of the Blitz, bombs dropping from the sky are actually the least of Peter's worries, as pirates soon kidnap him in a flying pirate ship and whisk him off to Neverland. And though he's originally brought there by the dastardly Blackbeard to work, he soon escapes, and along with the assistance of his friend, James Hook, and the mysterious native princess, Tiger Lily, goes in search of his long-lost mother. Now, I have to say before I say anything else, either positive or negative about this film, I am a huge, huge fan of its director, Joe Wright. In the past, he has just so clearly grasped cinema by the horns and made the most of this really visual and auditory medium. So often I feel like when I'm watching his films, I'm observing this beautifully choreographed, really intentional dance between light, motion, color, music, and sound. And even if you remove the visuals and just listen to the music, listen to Darius Marinelli's scores for films like Atonement, The Soloist, Anna Karenina. I mean, for instance, on Atonement, we have the typewriter. Or on The Soloist, we have the cars going by. Zoom. 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 And then the cello comes in. Mwam. Zoom. Zoom. Mwam. 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 And then, on top of that, lay in the visuals! I mean, just look at the way that the camera tangles back and forth and interacts with the actors in films like Hannah or in Anna Karenina. And it's not even just the long take, some of which Joe Wright is very famous for on films like Atonement. It's also the way that he just edits things together. There's such a rhythm and a syncopation that plays directly into the emotion of the film, which makes complete sense and falls perfectly in line with the quote from Joe Wright himself, where he said, What interests me is rhythm and how rhythm expresses emotion. And though the scripts on his films sometimes do fall short, I find myself becoming more and more engaged with his work because of his fantastic visual style, which is ever a feast for the senses. Except on pan, which is, in my opinion, kind of like a handful of broccoli. Now, I don't want to be completely imbalanced, so let's talk about a few of the positive things, a few of the elements that worked on pan. There are definitely moments of visual flair, like we saw in the trailer, which are undeniably fun and distinct. Also, Wright has said in certain interviews that he really made this film for his son, which is not only sweet, but I think inspired some of the better moments in the film. So for instance, Wright has said that his son is rather obsessed with trampolines, which directly led to the trampoline fight in the film, which I found to be one of the more imaginative, gleefully fun moments. Additionally, I really found the tone and visuals to be very successful in the first half of the first act of the film, where we're still in London. I love the fact that Joe was kind of able to bring us in that childlike perspective that it's not really bombs dropping from the sky that's terrifying, but rather the domineering, larger-than-life nun character that ran the orphanage. Also, there were numerous moments in the native camp where I felt like the cinematography really soared. There was just this fantastic usage of these bombastic, crazy colors, along with these very beautiful matte paintings of pirate ships and sunsets. And Levi Miller, as Pan, really did turn in a solid, earnest, engaging performance that I bought into. And though he's not quite as good as Saoirse Ronan on Atonement, I really did feel like it was proof that Joe Wright knows how to cast and direct young actors. In fact, all the young actors on this film are really great. And of course, I have to mention the production and costume design. It definitely felt like the people who were involved in both of those things were clearly enjoying themselves, playing on this scale and in this place of imagination and whimsy. Besides those things, the film really did feel like a mess to me, and a boring mess at that. And for a director who's all about rhythm and allowing that rhythm to elect emotion, I really felt like rhythm was one of the main things that was off on this film. And not just in the individual scenes themselves, but on the film as a whole. And you definitely don't have to read interviews from Joe Wright or from the screenwriter Jason Fuke to understand that both of them are trying to go for kind of your classic hero's journey beat. And if you're not aware of who Joseph Campbell is or what the hero's journey is, just look at Luke Skywalker or Harry Potter and you'll have a decent understanding of what it's all about. Now let's be clear, I am a sucker for the hero's journey. Give me a solid superhero origin story and I will be a happy film goer. But unfortunately, if there is a formula out there, one that is tried and true and has worked time and time again, certain people think all that they need to do to create a successful film is plug in their characters, plug in their plot lines into that formula, and voila, out comes a magically perfect film. 
And unfortunately, I feel like Pan is a perfect example of that not working. And it's really tough too, because I listened to interviews with Jason Fuchs, the screenwriter, and I like the guy. I like the fact that he's been influenced by Joseph Campbell and the fact that he's trying to integrate the hero's journey into this story of Pan. But I just feel like his influence from Joseph Campbell is only skin deep, and he really hasn't allowed it to soak in deeply enough that it can naturally come out in his characters and organically be infused into his storylines. More depressing still, I really felt like the filmmakers failed to capture what Pan has always been about, that being the themes of never growing up and the importance of holding onto your childhood in some way. And don't get me wrong, I definitely felt like they went for it and they tried it, but it felt like a group of adults trying to capture what it means to be a child. Like all it took to enter that dreamland or step into the idea that anything is possible was just throwing as many random images, colors, and sounds at the audience as possible with no real attempt to bring the audience into the internal logic of that world. Now, I definitely believe that each child has a slightly different imagination and plays slightly differently one to the other, but I know for myself, when I was especially Pan's age, I had an intense logic to the way that I played. And, you know, the space Legos would never interact with my Outback Australia Legos. It just didn't happen. And if they did, and those kind of random things came together, there was always still a logic in my mind. One of, okay, well, these space Legos are traveling to a desert planet, so therefore they're allowed to interact with those deserty Outback Rangers. But even if this film was being told from a different child's imagination or a different child's way of play, where stuffed animals can interact with Plumobile, it still failed to bring us into that mindset and allow us to experience it empathetically. Joe Wright himself said the main inspiration of this film was just the book's oddness and the fact that it doesn't underestimate a child's intelligence. I just feel like he failed to capture that. And there's another quote from Joe Wright that I felt like was really on display in this film, and that quote was, the process of filmmaking terrifies me. And I really felt like every single time a new piece of random design was introduced or any time a scene kind of just felt generic or fell flat, there it was. And he also talks about the fact that he loves the rehearsal process. He loves to explore things and come up with things with the actors. And I think that is a really wise idea. And I've seen it work in his past films. But if he himself, the man in charge, the man leading the way, doesn't have a strong cohesive vision to begin with, he will kind of get buffeted around and you'll end up with a random Nirvana song in there or a piece of design that just doesn't fit. Like, why does the Jolly Roger suddenly have a neon sign in the back of it? Also, let me make it perfectly clear, I have nothing against reimaginings. I love the modernization of Sherlock on the BBC, and I also really enjoy Chris Nolan's more grounded, realistic Batman. But if you're going to do that prequel or that sequel that you kind of never knew you needed, you have to go kind of one of two ways. Either you need to be distinctly different and really kind of separate yourself from that, or you need to be very kind of beholden to that original and play into it just so your audience isn't constantly confused and being pulled out of the story that you're telling. And I think a film that did a great job of this was Hook. And though it has a fair number of its own twists and turns, it by and large narratively nestles perfectly alongside J.M. Barry's original story. So you can watch the original Peter Pan and then go and watch Hook and the two don't contradict one another. And in the end, in my opinion, more than anything, the filmmaker's job is to transport us. To transport us to a different time, a different place, to allow us to walk in someone else's shoes, to see through their eyes, to think their thoughts, to feel their emotions. And this story should be so ripe for that. I mean, we have Peter Pan, we have Captain Hook, we have Neverland, for crying out loud, flying pirate ships, never beasts. And it's for all those potentially amazing reasons that I walked out of the film just feeling so bummed because I was constantly reminded that I was sitting in the theater watching actors playing dress up, delivering lines from a script. And it's for that reason that I will have to give this film only two out of five. I can't recommend it. Nonetheless, I would still love to know what you guys think, so please comment below. Let me know if the film worked for you in a whole, even if it didn't work on a whole for you, or there's certain elements, certain scenes, certain characters that you enjoyed. Also, please do subscribe. I'll be continuing to review films and television on this channel. For television, I'm currently in the middle of reviewing HBO's The Leftovers, and the next film I will be reviewing is Aaron Sorkin and Danny Boyle's Steve Jobs. So please do subscribe and stay tuned for all of those things. But for now, I'm Chris Hartwell. This is The Heartbeat, and I thank you for joining me. Thank you.